capabilities for both the C and C++ languages, let's take a quick look at what it does. In order for your source code to become an executable program, it first needs to be compiled. But what we need to realize is that this compiler is really several things in one package. Preprocessor, compiler, optimizer, and linker, and often more. Each of these steps is separate and distinct, even though they're often invoked with one command. For now, the step we're interested in is the preprocessor. One of the more common uses for the preprocessor is file inclusion. When you use the include directive, your source file will be treated as if the entire contents of the file you name here were included in place of the include directive. Then this combined file, called a translation unit, is passed to the compiler. A preprocessor macro works like a really smart alias. For example, after this declaration, any use of the word constant, in all caps, will be replaced by the digit 1. No math is performed, this is really just a string substitution in the source file. In this second example, we have a macro with parameters. Those parameters may be used in the replacement. This construct is common in C, less so in C++, where templates are often used instead. Conditional processing allows you to compile parts of your code only if certain conditions are true. In this common example, the contents of a header file are only processed once. This technique is called an include guard. Keep in mind that this step happens before compilation so you may only use constants and preprocessor macros for your conditions. Pragmas may be used to define implementation-specific behaviors for the compiler. Most common uses of pragmas relate to supporting certain compilers and computing architectures. Be careful using pragmas. They're typically not portable. The C preprocessor is an essential part of the compiler toolchain. And understanding how it works and what it can be used for is an essential part of learning C and C++.